Australian house prices have been in the news again, and not for the right reasons. Experts warn that due to factors such as unemployment, underemployment, lacklustre wage growth, weak house prices, and the looming threat of interest rate rises, mortgage stress is set to surge. Rates of mortgage default are highest in the mining states of Western Australia and Queensland. 15 of the top 20 worst performing suburbs are in these two states. Credit ratings agency Moody's suggests that the situation will only get worse as more and more interest-only loans are converted to principal and interest loans over the next 12 months. The Australian dream of owning your own home is looking less and less likely for a growing number of Australians. Martin North of Digital Finance Analytics makes a comparison with the current state of the Australian housing market with that of Ireland in 2007, just as its property market started to crash. All current metrics indicate that Australia is in a massive property bubble, metrics such as high debt-to-income and price-to-rent ratios. Australia currently has very low mortgage interest rates, and up until recently, very loose lending policies, which ultimately encouraged speculative buying. Many newly constructed apartments are simply not selling. A lot of property developers are now in financial difficulty. Interest rates can't get any lower, so only have one direction they can go up. The number of interest-only loans in Australia is staggering. Over the next few years, a total of about $360 billion of interest-only loans will roll over to interest plus principal, which equates to higher repayments for borrowers. We're setting ourselves up for one massive fall. Although the Reserve Bank of Australia may not increase domestic rates anytime soon, the big Australian banks all borrow offshore. The US, for example, has raised its rates eight times in the last few years. Australian banks will be forced to raise their mortgage rates regardless of the RBA's movements, and that's exactly what we have seen over the last month or two. Currently, there are also quite low rental yields, that is, properties are relatively expensive to buy compared to renting them. This is often a sign that the market is overvalued. If people cannot afford to buy the house they are currently renting, then something is askew. Sydney University economics professor Colm Harmon stated that this situation cannot persist long term without something giving way. About 40% of first home buyers are unable to get finance due to recent restrictions imposed by Australia's regulators. If you go back two or three years, almost everybody could get a loan. Australians are now one of the most indebted people in the world at about 200% of household income. Last week, Sydney house prices fell for the 12th consecutive month. Is this the beginning of a slow deflation, or a gigantic burst? Many forecasters predict a reduction of 10% as a base case. What if the declining prices result in a sudden halt to the housing construction boom? Then of course, lots of people will lose their jobs, increasing the number of housing loan defaults. This will lead to forced sales adding more pressure on an already struggling market. In this sort of situation, many people will be left with debts greater than the value of their property. Homeowners typically will do anything to keep a roof over their heads, but investors are more likely to sell when they see signs of a downturn in order to minimise their losses. This could result in a negative feedback loop as investors bail out. Some forecasters predict price drops of up to 35% in this kind of scenario. Some companies are already preparing themselves for a property crash. Australian Super, Australia's largest superannuation fund, is changing its rules so that members cannot suddenly withdraw investments from their property fund in the event of a downturn. They will be able to freeze all withdrawals and contributions to the fund for up to two years. Of course, they stated that they would only do this in exceptional circumstances. In other words, whenever they damn well want. If I currently had investments in the Australian Super Property Fund, I would be pulling out right now. Whatever happens, we certainly need to reconsider the Australian dream of owning our own home. We could help the matter by improving our tenancy laws. We need to allow for better long-term tenancies, allow tenants to modify the interior of their home somewhat by painting a wall or hanging a picture, and allow them to have pets. Currently, as a renter myself, there are too many restrictions. I feel more like a slave than a tenant. So where will this property correction end up? Hopefully it will result in more affordable accommodation, better rental laws, and improved living conditions for the average Australian. As always, time will tell.